Analysts at Sophos have unveiled EDR Kill Shifter, which is a sophisticated tool that ransomware attackers are using to disable endpoint protection software, marking a new and dangerous escalation in the cybersecurity arms race. How can organizations bolster their defenses to prevent the disabling of their EDR systems? The Biden administration is dedicating $11 million to secure open source software under the Open Source Software Prevalence Initiative. How will this help protect critical infrastructure from cyber threats? Security flaws have been discovered in Microsoft's Azure Health Bot service that exposed sensitive patient data to potential attackers. And even though they've been patched, this just emphasizes the need for more robust cybersecurity measures in the rapidly evolving landscape of AI-powered healthcare. And finally, companies that were affected by the CrowdStrike outage are starting to think that Rolling out updates a little slower will help prevent this from happening again. What are the potential risks of abandoning automated patching in favor of manual updates? You're listening to The Daily Decrypt. Researchers at Sophos have just discovered a new tool being used by ransomware attackers that allows them to disable their EDR solutions, and it's called EDR Kill Shifter. EDR Kill Shifter is a bring-your-own-vulnerable-driver tool, or BYOVD, designed to exploit legitimate but vulnerable drivers in order to disable security protections. Here's how it works. The attacker executes EDR Kill Shifter with a command line password, The tool then decrypts an embedded resource, loads it into memory, and drops a vulnerable driver. This driver helps it gain the privileges needed to disable your endpoint detection and response tools. If the attackers are successful in this, this could leave your system wide open to ransomware, data theft, or really any other malicious activities. The researchers at Sophos have also kindly provided some action steps you can take, such as enabling tamper protection on your endpoint security software, to prevent these unauthorized changes, and following everything they taught you in cybersecurity school, like the principle of least privilege by separating out your user and admin privileges, as well as keeping your systems up to date with the latest patches and removing known vulnerabilities. All right, big news from the White House. There's been an $11 million plan to help secure open source software. And this was just announced during DEF CON in Las Vegas by the National Cyber Director, Harry Coker Jr. And this investment backs the open source software prevalence initiative aimed at securing the open source software used by critical infrastructure providers. And this is critical because open source underpins everything from banking systems to energy grids. If it's vulnerable, so are all of these things. So this initiative will do many things, such as develop a software bill of materials, establish a U.S. government open source program office, promote memory safe programming languages, fund open source security tools, research AI for security's sake, foster public private partnerships and train more developers on secure development practices. This is all done with the hope that tighter security will mean fewer data breaches and system hijacks. But Harry Coker stresses it's not just on the government. The open source community needs to step up as well. And of course, that's a very convenient thing for him to say, trying to encourage some sort of shared responsibility between the government and open source developers. But honestly, it's on the government and the people auditing critical infrastructure. Open source is going to continue to exist and is going to continue to remain underfunded. And if the government wants them to start developing more secure open source software, they're going to have to throw money directly at the people developing these open source tools or create some sort of intermediary open source auditing platform that critical infrastructure can't use open source software until it passes these audits. Whatever the solution is, I believe Harry Coker Jr. is incorrect, and I believe that the government has to step up more than throwing a measly $11 million at this problem. Come on, I mean, at least give me a full fighter jet's worth of money towards all of critical infrastructure's open source software security problems, right? We all know that AI is all the rage now. And since it's become a hot button topic, all these companies are trying to integrate it into their products, right? Including Microsoft. And we all know how much money is in healthcare, especially in the United States. So Microsoft is trying to use AI to analyze healthcare data, right? Well, 
Researchers have just discovered some vulnerability in Microsoft's Azure HealthBot service that could have let hackers access sensitive patient data. The Azure HealthBot service is a cloud platform for creating AI-powered virtual health assistants. So essentially bots that can help you find doctors or check insurance claims. The flaws were in a feature called data connections used to integrate data from external sources. These researchers discovered that they could bypass built-in safeguards by using sneaky redirect response, effectively tricking the system into giving them access tokens, which could then expose sensitive resources across Microsoft Azure. So not only could they have access sensitive patient data, but they could have used this tool to move laterally within customer environments, accessing any sort of data they may have in Microsoft Azure. Now, the good news is that this vulnerability was disclosed to Microsoft responsibly, and Microsoft has since patched these flaws, so there's no current threat. But it's important to bring up, sort of as a wake-up call, on the importance of cloud security, especially in healthcare. AI seems to be sort of like the wild, wild west. We're not really exactly sure, but we're rushing to move west, right? We're rushing to expand it. And anytime we're rushing to roll out proprietary technology, there's going to be mistakes made. AI has the potential to provide a lot of value in a lot of different areas. But at this time, at this point in history, it's almost like a red flag. I personally am not purchasing or using any products that market as AI products, especially if they're new products. The only thing I do is use ChatGPT every once in a while to help me find resources. Where it stands now, AI is an exceptional tool for parsing data and providing suggestions. But anything that needs to be factually based or technically correct, AI simply lacks those capabilities. And finally, I think we're going to be talking about the CrowdStrike outage for a long time. But we're entering into the phase of this CrowdStrike outage where senior executives from the companies that were affected by this outage are doing their sort of after action reports, their postmortems on this incident and trying to come up with actions that they can take to help prevent this from happening again. And one of the actions that's floating around is to slow down updates and maybe even do them manually in order to help prevent this type of outage moving forward. Well, Security researchers, and really anybody with a security mindset, are calling this out as a bad idea. Automated updates, especially when it comes to security, are essential to keeping your environment secure. If there's a new vulnerability or a new exploit for something that you're running in your environment, you want your detection services to detect that as soon as possible. And if the CrowdStrike outage taught us anything, it's that there's not enough manual resources to update all of these systems because that's what it took to resolve, right? A manual human intervention for each of these systems. There's not enough of that. So these rollouts will be slow. They'll be backlogged. People will be picking and choosing patches they want to install. It's, an, it's a nightmare. And another thing to consider is that attackers know when these updates are getting pushed out. If the updates slow down, the attackers know they can use those exploits safely at this point. And it's also fairly safe to assume that these attackers know if your company uses CrowdStrike, especially after this outage, because it became very apparent that companies like Delta and Starbucks and all of these big companies use this. So now attackers know that you use CrowdStrike and that CrowdStrike hasn't updated certain exploits. It's a recipe for disaster. So if you're listening, I implore you to explore other solutions other than slowing down updates or making them manual. This has been The Daily Decrypt. If you found your key to unlocking the digital domain, show your support with a rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. It truly helps us stand at the frontier of cyber news. Don't forget to connect on Instagram or catch our episodes on YouTube. Until next time, keep your data safe and your curiosity alive. <laughs>